I'll set the scene for you. You just built a fresh commander deck. It doesn't matter what color combo or commander it is, but we all know that feeling of having spent time crafting a new deck. We painstakingly research cards to add to our deck. We think about what cards to cut. We search through our piles and binders for cards we haven't put in decks yet. And then we order what else we need, or we go to our local LGS. We sleeve up, box up, and eagerly await the next game night with our friends. You sit down as you are bringing out your new deck and struggle to shuffle your newly sleeved cards. And you're telling your opponents about your new commander and what the deck does, some cool interactions that you added, and why you chose that commander in the first place. Now here is where our story branches into two different timelines. Timeline 1. Your deck goes crazy and you lock it down. You're drawing all the right pieces at the right time. You ramp and card draw is superb. You manage to get removal and handle another player and find your endgame spell and close out the game and you have an amazing match. But part of you feels off because you just totally dominated the game. You think back to your interaction and it was double of anyone else's. Your turns were twice as long and you finished the game with a combo or a really powerful interaction. You can't stop thinking that maybe your deck was too strong against what your opponents were playing. Timeline 2. Your deck sucks. And I mean really sucks. You mulligan down to 5 or 6. Your starting hand was not what you had in mind. You were top decking the whole time and you were never the threat. You casted your commander because you had nothing else to do and it got removed by a board wipe or some spot removal. And your opponents are debating on how to end the game and who to kill first, and no one even mentions you or your new deck because you've just been a non-factor all night. You can't stop thinking that maybe your deck was too weak against your opponents. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. I'm your friendly blue mage, Azerain. And today, I wanted to talk about how to gauge the power level of your and others commander decks. This can be especially challenging for anyone, as it's hard to get a read on other people's decks and cards, because a magic deck is largely hidden from us as an opponent. We know our cards, but do we really know how well our deck stacks up against other people's? We've all been in one of the two scenarios I just talked about, and not even with a new deck. Sometimes we misjudge the power level of our opponent's decks and we play a pre-con that we just upgraded and get smashed, or we bring out one of our oldest and most favorite commander decks and pub stomp the group even if it wasn't our intention. This video will seek to help you determine your deck's power level and hopefully give you an idea of how to determine other people's deck's power level, even without knowing all the cards they have in their deck. Our first step is to determine the power scale in EDH. This is a way I like to think of the power scale, but everyone is different. Anyway, our first stop is 1 to 2, the bottom of the scale. Now this really won't get used much because you have to actively try and make your deck this bad. If you watch my other videos and follow my guides on ramp, card draw, removal, and so on, your deck is never going to be in the 1 to 2 category. So I like to lump the 1 to 2s in jank or themed decks. And remember that I said that you have to try and make your deck this bad, and trust me, you really do. This is for the people who do silly things like, yeah, every card in my deck has a chair in the artwork, or this deck is built to tutor out some janky combo that makes every permanent a clam, and if I do that, then it's a personal victory for me. Or something silly like that. People will restrict themselves on cards that they can run, and they'll omit the usual deck building requirements of ramp, removal, card draw, interaction, and things like that to craft their deck to be this weird jank pile. And trust me, you probably know the person I'm talking about. Next up is our 3 to 4, and we're going to start to pick up a little bit. I think the perfect example of a 3 to 4 commander deck are the base level precons. I know that some precons are built differently than others, but we all know how Wizards of the Coast likes to craft their precons. Usually it's something like 38 lands, 2 to 3 card draw, 2 to 3 removal, 1 board wipe, and then some value creatures to fill out the rest of the deck and stuff like that. And I'm sure that those numbers are probably not accurate and they probably fluctuate based on the precons and what year they were made, but you know generally what I'm talking about. You'll be able to play and get a feel for your commander in the deck, but you probably aren't winning many games unless you're playing against other precons. 
Now we go to the next section, which is the five to six. And this is honestly your bread and butter. This is the base level of commander decks that usually everyone likes to build or build around. This is what you're gonna see most often from your friends or from your LGS. A five to six deck will be a good spot to win a game and do your thing that you designed your deck to do, but still struggles with some consistency in some areas. In this category, you're probably getting more in tune with your colors what they do, how they achieve victory, and how they interact with each other. If you're not running a mono deck, you know, especially if you're running two colors, three colors, and then four colors, that might be a little advanced for some people, but the five to six decks are going to start to learn how those cards interact with each other and what those certain colors do well, and obviously what they struggle with. You'll probably be making cuts to the generic value creatures in favor of things like more ramp removal, interaction, card draw, counter spells, things that are going to help you stay alive, get to your end game, and find your top end cards that are going to make you win. And next up is the top end of casual EDH. This is the 7 to 8. And now this is the first time where I think I'm going to separate out the numbers and single them out being 7 and 8 and not lump them together like I've done for the previous numbers. So a 7 EDH deck will just break into the scene of having better games on average than most decks. A 7 will usually have a solid mana curve of 2-3 to three mana ramp spells, getting extra lands out, finding ways to draw extra cards more consistently, and packing a suite of removal and protection spells as well as having their path to victory narrowed down and tutoring for that crater hoof behemoth or getting their combo out and protecting it if that's the route that you wish to go. And then when we move on to the the most competitive casual decks being the 8. So an 8 on the commander scale is just turned up to the max. 8s will always have drawn extra cards, they'll always ramp on turns 1 through 3, they'll always put out threats early and, tries to and try to close the game as soon as possible. We probably all have that one friend who gets targeted every game because their deck and their knowledge of the game makes them a consistent threat of winning almost every time. Don't worry, if this isn't you, you will get there. It takes time to learn the game of magic and to get good at crafting decks and playing against other well-crafted decks. If you're getting targeted first and knocked out first, that probably means that you are the person who builds the seven to eight range of decks, so congratulations. Now maybe I should work on a video of how to survive a 3v1. So at the top end of the commander scale and spectrum, I reserve for CDH. I don't play CDH myself, but I've always thought of it as a 9, you're winning between turn 2 through 4 with a combo and have a bunch of free counter spells and your mana curve is somewhere between 1 and 3 mana. And a 10 would be you're just able to win on turns 1 through 2. You have some combo, you have protection, card draw, I don't really know how CDH works super in depth, but I imagine that it's something of that nature. Feel free to tell me that I'm wrong in the comments, but this is just my version of the commander scale. And with all of that being said, you should be able to gauge your commander decks a bit more accurately now. If you want to upgrade your current decks, make sure to check out some of my other videos on how to include these basics of deck building to improve your decks and maybe boost their power level a couple notches. But something else that I need to address before the end of this video is how to gauge other people's commander decks. As I said, we won't know what cards or combos other people are running, and this can be scary when thinking about playing in an LGS as people might not share the same sentiment as you do with interactions or combos, and I have definitely been there a good handful of times. A lot of people like combos and they like playing those and they don't think that playing them is a bad thing. They think that running a three to four card combo is super easily stopped and you can see it coming and they don't have an issue with it. This is why judging your friends decks or your immediate playgroup's power level will be much easier as you will have seen everyone's decks multiple times and know how their deck functions enough to know roughly what their power level is. The first thing when trying to determine the power level of someone else's deck, you just have to ask them. This is a casual format and if someone is going to lie to you for a cheap win or is just trying to pull one over on you, I'm not sure that you really want to be playing with those types of people anyway. More often than not, people will be honest because they want to have fun playing at the same or similar power level as you. It isn't fun to get rolled or to just roll others. You want to have a fun back and forth that feels earned when you win or lose. So just remember to be honest with others. Some questions I would ask when determining their power level would be things like, does your deck have any combos? 
How many tutors do you run? How many removal or board wipes are in your deck? How much ramp is in your deck? After someone has answered these basic questions, you should be able to gauge their power level more accurately. Running combos, tutors, and a lot of ramp will give you a good idea that their deck is pretty tuned and you can either adjust the deck that you're playing or politely ask them to play a weaker deck as your decks might not be able to compete with a more tuned magic deck. After asking those basic questions, we look at the commander. If someone pulls out a Muldrotha of the Gravetide deck, it can go in many different ways. It can be a mega combo with graveyard recursion to get around removal, or it can just be a value commander because they like the salty colors. Remember to just ask them. Don't be shy. If I see someone pull out their Terror Grid or a Traxa deck, I can pretty safely assume that they'll be playing a high power level without even asking them quite the questions that I mentioned earlier. When I see someone pull out a card like, I don't know, Arcades the Strategist, I'll know that they're playing Walls, they'll be drawing extra cards when they do, and they will be very dependent on having their commander out, which may not be as threatening as something like Thrasios and Timna. So I know that I need to come into this game trying to remove their commander to keep their deck's power level at bay, knowing that I can assume that they'll be running more protection spells than usual to protect their commander, as he's pretty essential to the deck. After I assume these things, I look at their commander, I look at their color identity, I ask the questions I mentioned earlier, and I can determine that this deck is most likely somewhere between a 5 and a 7 on the commander scale. Now this won't always be super accurate as you could over or underestimate someone's deck. You will just have to shuffle up and play again if you assumed wrong and adjust your deck and play style accordingly. The last piece of advice that I will give is to be honest yourself. If you don't know someone else's power level and you don't know how to judge it quite yet, tell them about your deck. For example, hey the deck I'm playing tonight is a Dehada deck. I got the precon because I like the colors and I made some adjustments and added in a few more legends that I liked that I had lying around. I fixed the mana base a little bit more and I added some more removal. I don't have any combos or anything like that, but I just wanted to play some legendary creatures in cards. Do you have anything that you think could match up well against a deck like that? You will find that more often than not, people will appreciate your honesty when talking about your deck, and they'll want to match your power level to have a more fun game. Remember to have fun, and go forth with your new knowledge on how to gauge your magic decks. Maybe this video has encouraged you to upgrade some of your decks that are struggling, or maybe you've decided to shelf some of your higher end magic decks as they have a really consistent win rate with your current playgroup. You should also have a better idea of how to gauge power levels in the wild when you're playing at a con or an LGS. I'm your friendly blue mage Azerain, and if you like what I'm trying to do here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.